Hi, this is Stephanie Pruitt, and I am joining you on the fourth day of 30 by 30 by 30. I'm at the Frist Center for the Visual Arts in Nashville, Tennessee, where again, I have visited the 30 Americans exhibit, chosen one work of art from the exhibit, and drafted a poem in relation to the work. Today, I chose um, a piece called Rehearsal by John Bankston. Um, John Bankston was born in 1963 and rehearsal was created in 2004. It's a very large large piece on canvas. It's oil or oil on linen, linen canvas. And at first glance, it made me think of a coloring sheet, like from a children's coloring book, because part of the scene is colored in, part of it is blank. There are five men, um, three standing together, then another set of two men, one sitting in a chair, one standing right next to him, and then a woman who's sitting in a chair, and they're all in this outdoor space, um, with several trees, grass, flowers, and they're very dark black lines outlining all of the figures in this space. And part of them are painted and fully colored in, other parts are blank. And so it immediately made me really, it, I felt this urge to pick up a paintbrush or a crayon and fill it in. But then I started thinking about um, being filled in and being devoid. That made me think of sound and silence. And I'll read the draft that I wrote. It went in a slightly different direction, but I'll talk about the process here. Uh, and the title is, the title of the draft so far that I have is A Study in Sound and Silence. I sometimes mouth the words to hymns, no sound from my throat, call it lazy, call it memory lapse, call it a simple show, no. Call it faith in the voice of the audience a belief in others' ability to fill in the blanks. Call it rehearsal. Visualizing the path in advance of the steps. Showing up despite my moments of disbelief. Hanging the whole picture of me. All complete and in progress. So the draft again is called A Study in Sound and Silence and it's in relationship to rehearsal by John Bankston. My guess, of course, is that John Bankston was not thinking about the experience of being in a church and not singing all of the words out loud, just mouthing them with no, with no um, sound coming out. But that was one of the things that came to mind as I looked at this work that obviously is a completed work. He's very intentionally dealing with you know, positive and negative space, what's been filled in, what hasn't, and under the, the illusion of a very kind of simply constructed piece, really dealing with some serious ideas of what do we see, when do we give space for people to fill in and kind of bring their whole selves and their ideas to the picture that we're creating. That was really interesting to me and made me think about the experience of showing up, kind of putting it all on the line, whether you feel like it's all there and complete and colored in or not. So it's, it's kind of a, tan, a tangent of a point that I took from John Bankston's work, but I was very aware of the spaces in which I am comfortable going when I don't feel like I have it all together and complete. And this connected actually to an experience I've had today. I presented earlier today at a local conference, an arts conference, and Immediately after that, I rushed over to the Frist Center to do my daily writing, and I felt disheveled. I didn't feel like I had it all together. I was struggling to find my pencil. Just a little, little interesting note about the process of 30 by 30 by 30. When I go into the gallery every day, um, I'm able to take paper and a pencil. They prefer, the docents and the gallery directors prefer that you not write with an ink pen while you're in the gallery, just as kind of a protective measure for the art. So I had my materials, my physical literal materials, but I just felt scattered having gone you know, so many places today and kind of running a little late. So I didn't feel like I was showing up completely. And there's something about a piece of artwork or a creative space that allows you to come as you are, kind of show up with whatever you have, whatever, whatever ideas, resources, experiences you have, and that experience or that space allows you to kind of fill in the blanks. 
And there are some creative spaces, institutions, museums, performance spaces that seem to really thrive on meeting people where they are creatively and culturally. There are other spaces that sometimes feel a bit foreboding to audience members who might not feel like they totally understand or have it together. So I talk sometimes about creative placemaking and how is it that an arts rich space can be welcoming and allow us to come in with our own ideas wherever we are, maybe expand our horizons, go in different directions, but spaces that don't feel like they're completely colored in for us already. And, and Bankston's piece, Rehearsal, made me think of that. There's really a lot more going on in this painting. There are obviously some gender dynamics that the artist is exploring. There's some issues of identity and what we see skin-wise and what we just feel in automatically based on ethnic features. There's, there's really, I think, a complicated kind of landscape in this painting. But just the most immediate thing that I picked up on is the willingness to allow people to kind of come as they are, bring their own ideas and concepts into, into the picture, kind of into the landscape. And, you know, I think about as a poet, I write something with clear intentions. I write something that I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm, there are topics I'm dealing with, there's something formally or structurally that I am attempting to do with the poem. Part of me wants my audience to get that. To, to get it, you know, when we talk about, oh, I don't get this artwork. There is some, I did air quotes again. That's so funny to me when I do it. But anyway, there is a part of me as an artist who, who really would like people to see what I see or kind of think and feel what I think and feel. But that's not a realistic expectation I can have and it actually cuts my work short. I know that when I am writing, when I am revising and drafting and really being open to all of the possibilities, even with the path that I have of intention in my work, there are going to be images, illusions, ideas that people can see that I might not see. There might be some things that I see very clearly that others don't. So it's kind of, it's a two-way street. It takes the artist showing up and creating the work, and it takes the audience member showing up and engaging and bringing their ideas. Bankston's piece really brought that up for me, but I think the big thing, and one of the lines in the poem, that was interesting to me that really relates to this idea was um, call it faith in the voice of the audience. So this image of a person who's mouthing the words to a song and they aren't actually filling in the sound, but they have this faith in the voice of kind of the choir, the communal audience to fill it in. And I, I really think about that when it comes to creative spaces and places and accessibility and people engaging with a full, whole, complete work, but also bringing themselves to the table. I don't know, there we go. All right, you see my 30, it is right there. I've had some really amazing experiences with, with you all emailing me and sending messages about your thoughts, asking questions about the individual works of art that I'm talking about. Again, I encourage you to see the 30 Americans show. And I'm not doing this and saying this as a commercial. This is not about, you know, I'm not making any money <laughs> off of people, you know, coming to the show and, and or getting a membership at the first or anything like that. I don't benefit in that way, but sometimes I feel like I'm living in a creative bubble. I'm writing in relation to some idea or work that can feel far off in kind of the big picture of what people are dealing with in the world. So it's really exciting to me to think about people engaging with the same visual prompts that I've been dealing with and then hearing and being able to talk with them about their response to them. So this is a selfish thing. If you come see the show, then maybe we can like go get coffee and talk about it and I'm not just in my head. I don't know. If you do, make sure that you mention that you heard about it from 30 by 30 by 30. I'm also tweeting, 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 twatting. I don't know. This social media is kind of new to me, but I'm also tweeting about this experience. I'm at Pruitt Stephanie, and I'm using the hashtag 30 by 30 by 30. I'm getting there, y'all. I'm an artist, you know, figuring out the whole business communication side. It's, it's an interesting journey. I'm glad to be taking it with you. All right, check in on me tomorrow. You'll see the 31. Take care.